So we're excited to be continuing today's conversation in person with our Tech 365 underwriters, both Sienna and Verizon. So um, on stage with me, it's the, the Jim and Lamont show. We get to do it in person this time, which is so nice. Usually it's been on Zoom for quite a while. Yes. Though. Done, uh, done a couple of these. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. So um, well, let's just jump on into it. So Jim, let, let's start with you first. Can you talk to us about why TDM modernization is an important task for the DOD to undertake? Yeah, sure. Um, mic check, everybody? Yeah, here, good. So I guess let me answer that in, in, in two ways. I'll talk a little bit about uh, why TDM modernization is important in the context of modernization uh, in general. So uh, TDM stands for time division multiplexing, and it's one of the alphabet soup things, but it really <laughs> refers to uh, a set of uh, transmission and communication protocols which have been around since the late 80s. Uh, so they've been around a long time and you know there's a there's a large set of legacy equipment that speaks these protocols. If you're to things like Sonnet or SDH or you know T1, DS1 through DS3, there's a whole set of protocols that TDM refers to. And these been, have been around for a, a long time. Uh, so long in fact that uh, you know most of the carriers like Verizon aren't even supporting that type of service in the, in, the, in, the, in the wide area network. You, in many cases, you can't get that service anymore. If you can, it's gotten quite expensive. Um, there are also challenges with respect to uh, support because most of the equipment that uh, supports those protocols is uh, manufactured discontinued. Uh, there aren't that many people from a technician and support perspective that even understand how, how all those things work. So there are a number of logistic challenges associated with that. That said, particularly in the mission space, um, there are a number of sensors and services that still use those older protocols because they're part of equipment that was procured years ago that's still a valuable part of the mission. And so you can't just cut off uh, the, that, that part of uh, the network and, and that service because there's, there's real mission requirements associated with it. Um, but what you'd like to do is be able to operate that equipment at the edge in such a way that you can still have it use the legacy protocols, but you can translate that protocol so that you can use modern Ethernet uh, technologies. And that's what TDM modernization is about. It's about still being able, able to support from a mission perspective those older protocols that uh, you still need to because they're still valuable, um, while operating it over network infrastructure that's modern and can be, be, be procured and, and be supported. Um, and then from a network modernization perspective, really the, the, you know, the benefit there is all about cost per bit, about availability of service and, and flexibility. Uh, modern networks have vastly more capacity. We're talking you know, terabits uh, worth of, multi-terabits worth of capacity that uh, you know, older systems don't. And so when you, talk, when you think about new capabilities and new services, uh, you really need a more modernized architecture uh, and infrastructure to support that. So uh, really two things, getting rid of the legacy and supporting a lot of the flexibility that uh, modern infrastructure allows. So Lamont, what's caused some of the slower adoptions of more modernized technology? Yeah, no, thank you. So a lot of that is around, there's so many things that are impacting that, and they're or things from a policy standpoint, from a personnel standpoint, from just the applications today themselves that would be the reason why we got, it's taking time for this to be able to move through. Um, taking it from the technology side of it is, when you look at that, there's a lot of mission systems, a lot of applications, a lot of things that have been developed over the years that whether it's done on, at, a, at a necessity from the uh, mission uh, soldiers or anyone on the field to be able to say, hey, how do I then get information situation awareness? How do I get this application to work? How do I get connectivity to it? All those things are being developed with this existing technology today. The question is then, how do I then take that? Do I have to look at that? Do I have to deprecate this application and do something new? Do I have to refactor that application to be able to leverage the new technology that is going to be out there today? So all these things have got to be considered on how do we do it. If you think about when um, you know, going into the cloud computing era, you know, mainframes. You know, everybody was on a mainframe and they had things that are set up on there. It took time to be able to figure out how do we then get these things to move from mainframe to cloud. Similar when we start doing the transformation of the network because there are 
applications are tightly coupled to the performance of this. So how do we then take that, moving it from a TDM into uh, Ethernet or into a wireless type environment today? And then there's also the look at, at how does this work with the personnel and the processes and the procedures that are associated with that? Because you know, you got to look at the culture and what's been built around that and the expectations of what's been developed today um, and how you, the reliance of these networks and how they're set up, how does that impact what the soldier is going through, what the situation awareness um, inside of a uh, infrastructure is being developed. So you got to work through the policies and procedures to be able to then, that this would be tied to, how do you then change those to make sure that there's that acceptance and adoptance of it? Because anytime there's a change that's associated with the uh, enterprise, there's got to be something that's also talked about the culture of the processes and procedures to do that. And then you're looking at large networks here. There, these aren't something where it's just like coming out of my bedroom or you know, out of our house. We're talking about major enterprises, places that are in austere um, locations, both in uh, CONUS and OCONUS. How do you then make sure that we're able to then effectively do this in a cost, costful manner? Because um, there's only so much budgeting that's available there today. So how do you then do that with you know, the budgets that are there, how do you plan that accordingly? Um, we know Rome wasn't built in a day, as you all heard before. How do you then figure out where the innovation and the mission and how those things merge and figure out the right time, right places to then do that changing and, and evolution to the next um, generation of the, uh, technology? So there's so many different factors that have got to be uh, taken into, and that's kind of why the slower adoption. But that's where working with industry partners, we can help with understanding, okay, here's what's the next steps to be able to then move to that technology and how to do that effectively so that it works within the mission set and then within budgets and then within um, the you know, different environments that, uh, that we need to change today. So, Jim, are you able to share the benefits of TDM modernization and how can it support those that are DOD decision makers, the most important ones that are submitting budget requests? Yeah, sure. Uh, so. You know, the, the, the benefits from TDM modernization really uh, come from some of the challenges that I mentioned uh, in my answer to the first question. So, you know, if, and particularly from a procurement perspective, uh, if, if what you're looking at is the cost to deliver a particular service, the ability to support from a logistics perspective when something fails to have support and spares, um, the older equipment, you really don't have that, particularly if you're running through older network infrastructure. So uh, cost to support, availability of support, mission reliability, um, and cost per unit capacity are all things that are substantially improved when your network uh, is modernized and from a procurement perspective uh, are as benefits, really, that uh, can be taken into account uh, and can justify uh, that modernization. So to my understanding, Lamont Verizon, with the support of Siena, has undertaken the same task of modernizing and transitioning their entire enterprise from legacy to more modern technologies. Can you share a little bit about that journey and how the DOD can gain insights for their own modernization needs? Yes. So Exactly as you said, we've worked with Sienna to be able to modernize our networks too. So what does that mean? So we've had on our, you know, supporting all of our customers and from both the commercial side and the, the public sector side, uh, we had multiple networks, multiple capabilities to be able to support all of our customers. Um, so think about that. We have like, you know, uh, a TDM network, we had another network, which we, we supporting from another company we may have acquired, something that was being built purposely for a specific mission or a specific customer. Um, so we would be managing these different networks, these different pieces of connectivity, these different technologies to support our business today and support the different mission sets. So one of the things which we went to undertake is looking at the things from how do we then provide better reliance to our customers? How do we find a better cost-effective way to be able to support um, the customers and our, our business as well. And then how do we then build this so that we have the ability to then in, bring in new innovation and new technology so we're ready to be positioned for the next thing that's coming down that we want to either consume to be able to deliver to our customers or develop ourselves today. And a lot of that was working with Sienna to be able to then collapse all those networks down into one. Be able to then realize, okay, how do I then come into that fiber network to be able to deliver Ethernet services out, be able to get to dynamic access support to be able to then spin up and spin down technology, and also to be able to enable wireless too as well, because I mean, as we all know, we are a very mobile 
wireless world and our data is digitalized across and it proliferates all the way out to the edge to where we are today. It's no longer behind a moat. That can't be done on the aging technology that we have. And that's where we work with Sienna to be able to then collapse that network and then realize the gains that we would be able to get from there and do some of the work from virtualization, building in the, um, the fiber, and then also then be able to leverage that to be able to, to take on that spectrum that we have that we just fit, spent a lot of money for so we can deliver those services out to all of uh, you today. And then that will then enable those edge computing capabilities, enable the the speed to get to deliver services out to wherever it is inside of the environment, both CONUS and OCONUS, and, and work today. And when I, I should define OCONUS, what I mean overseas, outside of the United States, um, to make sure that uh, you know we're able to support the mission um, today. So that's really how we're working today. And a lot of that is based on reliability network, ensuring that we have the technology that's available, um, like Jim said, make sure those, those capabilities are there, that we're not using aging things that are out there, and make sure we're ready to go make sure that we're ready to innovate and bring that, that, uh, um, the new technology to our customers and also to be able to, to have cost savings for not only for our business but also something that we can pass to our customers too as well. So once the DOD completes the great majority of their TDM modernization initiatives, what's next for them? Yeah, so what's next is, as I said, we're in that data proliferation age. I mean, data is now the next biggest currency or the biggest currency that we have. How do we provide information? How do we provide understanding of situation awareness? How do we ingest things from a sensor side to be able to then, you know, work towards that mission set? So how do I do that is, you know, building these networks out to be able to support the large amounts of sums of data, the large amount of applications that are there. So. Well, now, once we start building these, modernizing these networks, and it'll take time to be able to do this, we understand that. But what you do is you look at it from the intersection of innovation and of needs and wants, and what's ne necessary for the mission, so that you can then build that out and get the network to be where it needs to be, so that you can support and ingest this new technology. And then from there, you then continue to evolve and continue to look at how do I then see the new tech that's out there. You just heard before the previous panel talk about all the AI support, you know, how do I then take that, how do I tie that to the mission set, and then understanding how does that then tie to the technology I have available for me today, and then continually to iterate on how do I do and move the networks themselves so that we are able to um, continue to ingest that and then support the mission set. No matter what we do, all the, all the new tech, it's really relying on what we have. The connectivity mm -hmm. of our world is what, is what makes the AI work, make the quantum computing work, make the cloud services work. Without that underpinning of a strong network, and that data is really just data that's sitting there in, in, a, in a circle by itself. Yeah, I mean, the so networks as we know today, they're, they're a force multiplier, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, most of the um, you know, defense team and the folks that are in the field, they need the network in order to be as efficient and effective as they are today. And a modernized network really is one that allows you to scale and adapt to, you know, failures, be they be kinetic or otherwise uh, caused, uh, and really to allow, as the mission changes, the network can evolve uh, underneath it. And, you know, that's the key benefit, besides the availability and the cost we're talking about, but it's really about being able to um, multiply the capabilities for the warfighter through the use of network capabilities. So that's how future yeah. modernization activities will be affected with the DOD. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean there I will say there, you know, this is this is a process, as as Lamont said. You know, you don't snap your fingers and say, you know, two weeks from now I want to have, or even a month from now I want to have a modernized network. There's a whole process to go through uh, that can take, you know, months to years actually, depending on the type and scale of the network. That you're, that you're modernizing, but you know, it's, it, it's key to do the analysis necessary to determine what your future uses are for the network, to analyze how you're gonna transition the network, and then when you do have that modernized network, you have the ability to fairly seamlessly move from the TDM services to Ethernet services, and to evolve the network for higher capacities and uh, n you know, newer applications as the need arises. So the first step would be a healthy slice of patience. Uh, <laughs> and, and upfront analysis, yeah. yeah. Uh, which, you know, Verizon, Sienna, we have services that can help you understand your network needs, well, your network today and your network needs going forward, and then to chart a path for that modernization journey. 
Well, gentlemen, thank you. That's all the time that we have. Uh, thank you both for your time and sharing your expertise with us. And uh, thank you, Sienna and Verizon, for making this event possible. And thank you, everyone. to our editorial team for their distinguished sessions, and thank you to our underwriters for their participation. We now invite you to join us for lunch in the atrium. We'll meet you back here at 1.30 for plenty more this afternoon.